Mina, Ohio Gazimas, Jesus Freaking Gamer here. For those of you who have forgotten or do not know at this point, Ohio Gazimas means good morning in Japanese. One, I'm a weeaboo and an otaku. Number two, I rarely do anything in the morning, just having to stay up all night and now it's morning. So I was like, you know what? I'll just use the good morning phrase. And I figured at this point, it's been a few videos. Let me just explain that in case someone had missed that or just not seen that yet. Today, or I should say for this one, the day of putting out quite a few messages. But right now, it's 2 Samuel chapter 24, and I'm going to start at verse 11. A lot of us as Christians, let's be honest, we somewhat are afraid the Lord's going to do stuff to hurt us. He's going to allow stuff to come our way. It's going to be painful, dark, and scary, especially if we mess up. And I want to address that right now. It's 2 Samuel chapter 24, verse 11. Now David has done something stupid. He has sinned. <clears throat> now when David arose in the morning, the word of the Lord came to the prophet Gad, David's seer, saying, Go and tell David, thus says the Lord, I offer you three things. Choose one of them for yourself, that I may do it to you. So Gad came to David and told him, and he said to him, Shall seven years of famine come to you in your land? Or shall you flee three months before your enemies while they pursue you? Or shall there be three days plague in your land? Now consider and see what answer I should take back to him who sent me. And David said to Gad, I am in great distress. Now most of us stop there. And we're just like, oh crap. What's the Lord going to do next? What's he going to tell me to do? Where is he going to send me? What punishment is there going to be for my sin? Listen to David's answer, and I don't know how to make this happen, but I'm going to say it anyway. Make this sink into your heart, not just here in your mind as a, you know, as a brain nugget. It's just a, a, a factoid, a, a, you know, a kilobyte of data. Let this sink into your heart. Ver, chap, 2 Samuel chapter 24, verse 14, And David said to Gad, I am in great distress. He didn't stop there. Please let us fall into the hand of the Lord, for his mercies are great. But do not let me fall into the hand of man. Here's what happened. Verse 15, So the Lord sent a plague upon Israel from the morning till the appointed time, which was three days according to Gad. From Dan to Beersheba, 70,000 men of the people died. And when the angel stretched out his hand over Jerusalem to destroy it, the Lord relented from the destruction and said to the angel who was destroying the people, It is enough. Now restrain your hand. And the angel of the Lord was by the threshing floor of Arunah the Jebusite. We deserve to be punished for our sin. And sometimes what the Lord calls us to do is scary. Like Jesus was called to die for us on the cross. Hebrews also says that Jesus did it for the joy that was set before him. Not that the cross itself was fun or joyous. He sweated drops of blood because he didn't want to do it so much. But at the end of that, there was resurrection. And after the resurrection, there were millions upon, hopefully billions of sons and daughters that would come into God's kingdom through his sacrifice. And even though David was punished for his sin, the Lord, before the final blow, relented. The Lord's mercy and grace are greater than we can possibly imagine. And I'm saying this as one who has received mercy and grace. I've done some dumb stuff in the past. And losing my mom was hard. But the Lord's mercy and grace in my life is amazing and incredible. Not to say that I have arrived and I'm never afraid and I'm always anxious to hear what the Lord has to say next. Sometimes I am scared. Sometimes I am afraid, especially when I've done something that's... Get a little closer here. When I've done something that's stupid and I've goofed up. But you know what? Ten times out of ten, the end of the story is good and bright and full of light. And the Lord's love, mercy, grace, and peace are abundantly clear. It's our sinful nature and our flesh which make the Lord seem so fearsome and His way so scary. If we will crucify our flesh, take up our cross daily and follow Jesus, we will find Him to be a God 
that is better and gooder than our wildest imaginations. Please consider this. And I myself, I need to remember my own words here. Because like I said, I haven't arrived. It's not like it's always great and it's always good. I'm a lot better than I used to be. And I've come to know how great and gracious our God is. Please, again, take this to heart. Don't just make it a mental nugget, a little kilobyte, a factoid date in your brain. Let this sink into your heart and know that God is merciful and that he relents of the disaster that he would have brought upon us. That's why Jesus came and died for us. Thank you guys very much for watching this video. I love you and God bless.